In the last video, we have built a working data producer and a data consumer. Our consumer merely took the incoming messages and was printing them to the screen. However, in this short video, we want to do this a bit more professional. I think the best way to load data into BigQuery is to just push the data into PubSub as protobuffer bytes and then load that protobuffer into BigQuery. The protobuffer pretty much has everything we need in order to load it into a table since the fields have names and every field is associated with a data type. If you agree with me, you can actually just use the proto to BigQuery template in Google Dataflow. Dataflow is a cloud runner for Apache Beam. Apache Beam is a unified data processing engine for stream and batch processing. It is written in Java, but also provides a client for Python and Go. However, I think the Go client lacks comprehensive documentation. Due to this lack of documentation, we are going to use a template to set up this pipeline. So we're actually not coding at all. However, the nice thing about this approach is that you can just reuse it for all the other use cases. If you want to write data into BigQuery, just encode your rows as protobuffer bytes, send them to PubSub, and Dataflow will take care of putting that data into a designated BigQuery table. Okay, let's first set up a dataset and a table for our project. The table should have the fields of our game event message as defined in the proto file. For this, head into Google Cloud, then go to BigQuery. So, on the one hand, I will open the protobuffer file. So go into the proto folder. Let's actually, let's print the proto file here. And then on the other side, I will open BigQuery. All right, in our project, we want to create a dataset called Vegas. Remember that a dataset in BigQuery is like a database in SQL. Hence, I create a new one for this project. So inside Go for Data Engineers, I want a new dataset. And I'm calling that one Vegas. And I'm going to put this into a single region, which is going to be Iowa. Let's create that data set. And inside the data set, we want a table called events. So Vegas, we create a new table. Should be an empty table. And this table is called events. It's native table. Okay, so the schema is now super important. Obviously, the schema of the table needs to match the schema of the proto files if we simply want to stream them into BigQuery as they get produced. So open the message definition on the right and keep the schema editor on the left. So remember that for every event, there is an ID event and ID table device. String field that is merely used as a unique identifier for an event and where the event has happened. We can simply put them in as string fields. I'm going to allow no values for all the fields in this case. Rather, I would probably put tight monitoring on the incoming data. So if we want to encode the ID event and the ID table device, which is a string field. So let's add them in here. So we say ID underscore event, string, nullable, and ID table device, which is also a string field and nullable. Okay, there you go, your string fields. However, we can also add one more, which is game. Yes, it's an enum, but remember that this is merely a predefined list of values. The data can be put in as strings. So let's add another one called game, which is string and nullable. Then we have two nested fields, value and foul detection. Okay, this is a bit tricky since it is a nested field. However, we can easily represent that in BigQuery by setting the data type to record. A record is like a struct. Notice that you can add nested fields for the value and foul detection fields that are inside. So we are going to create record fields, one for value, which is of type record, and nullable, and another one for foul underscore detection, which is also a record. Now we can just add the fields with the types inside the record fields. So in value, we are going to create one called return underscore value, which is actually a float. We're going to add one called runtime, which is also a float. And we're going to add one called players, which is an integer. I see I misspelled fall detection. And inside fall detection, we have one field called probability, which is a float. So let me check this one more time because it's super important that we get this right. So we have an ID event, which is right here. We have ID table device, which is right here. Both are strings. We have game, which is right here, which is also a string. We have a value field, 
which is right here, which is a record. And inside the value field, we have return underscore value, which is a float. We have runtime, which is a float. We have players, which is an integer. We have foul underscore detection right here. And inside foul detection, we have probability, which is also a float. So this schema now matches the messages as they are laid out inside the proto file. With that in place, we can create the table as it is now ready. So we're not doing any partitioning or cluster ordering, just create a table. And looking at the definition, I just realized that we should have probably put a timestamp in here when the event has happened. I just realized that we have no timestamp field in here. But for training, that's fine. Obviously, the only thing now missing is a data pipeline that takes the protobytes and saves it as rows in BigQuery. So let's go into Google Dataflow for that. It is located in the analytics part of the old products overview. So we go into old products, then we go into analytics, and there you have Dataflow. Here we can create a simple job that does exactly what we want. Navigate to jobs and hit create job from template. So jobs and then create job from template. So we need to set a job name and I'm going to set this one to game event analytics ingestion. So game event analytics ingestion. We also need to choose a region since Google Cloud will have to spawn VMs to actually run this job. Again, I'm choosing Iowa here. In Dataflow template, choose PubSub Proto to BigQuery. As the name says, this is exactly what we want. So let's just look for Proto. So PubSub Proto to BigQuery. So that's the template that we are going to use. Okay, so as you can see, we need to set some configurations for that job. The first thing we need to give is the path to the Proto schema file. You might be confused and ask yourself what this is. Well, with your compiled code, you can also choose to create a language agnostic descriptor file that contains the schema of your messages. So if you read this message down here, you will see that you can create one when compiling your messages by adding the descriptor underscore set flag when using proto C. Also, we can include the include underscore imports flag to make this file self-contained. So let's actually recompile our files and do that. So since we haven't changed anything in those messages, we can ignore the Python and Go code that gets created. However, I'm going to run the complete command anyways. So make sure you are inside the proto folder of our Vegas project right here. So we are using the proto compiler and we're setting Python underscore out. Well, we set this to the build Python folder and we have go underscore out. Well, we set this to the build go folder and then we have the new one which is descriptor underscore set underscore out so this grip so this descriptor underscore set underscore out goes into schema dot pb and dash dash include underscore imports and we want to compile the file called games.proto. If we now have a look at the content of this folder, you will see that there is a schema.pb file. It's a binary file, so looking at its content doesn't really reveal a lot for us. Anyways, we now need to put that file into our Google Cloud Storage since we have to point the template to such a file. I'll just create a Vegas folder and put it in there. So let's go into Google Cloud Storage actually. So let's go into Google Cloud Storage. We go into our Go for Data Engineers storage. Let's create a new folder called Vegas. Let's go in there. So in the meantime, I just uploaded the schema.pb file that was created by Proto-C. And we now have the schema pb file inside the Vegas folder. So let us point to this file inside the job creation window. So let's go back to the job creation window. And now we want to browse. We go into our go for data engineer storage bucket. Then we go into Vegas and there's the schema.pb file. So let's select that one. And the next input needed from us is the name of the message that contains our data. Remember that the name is game event. However, have a look at the info text down there. We need to give the full name that also contains the package name. Looking at the proto file reveals that the package is called Vegas. So let me just print the message once more. So games proto 
and we have a package up here which is called Vegas. So the full name would be Vegas.GameEvent. So the full proto message name is Vegas.GameEvent. Then we need to give the input subscription right here. Well, that is easy. We can just choose the default one that was created for us. So let's just take this Vegas-Sub. The next input is also obvious. We need to say in which table we want to stream the data. This will be our events table. So let's say browse. So there it is, the events table and the data set Vegas. So we'll select that one. The next input seems a bit weird. It is asking for an output topic of PubSub. This seems counterintuitive since we want to stream from PubSub, not to PubSub, right? Well, where do you actually get important messages like errors? You need to provide an output PubSub topic for that one. Since we don't have one for that, let's create a new topic called Vegas-Logs. And we can actually just use a shortcut that is right here. So we can say create topic. And I'm going to create one called Vegas-Logs. Now go ahead and have a look at the optional parameters. You can see that the preserve proto field names is set to false. However, I would like to keep the proto field names since we have built our BigQuery table around this. Hence, we set this to true. We can leave the rest as is. Just notice that the data gets appended to your table. Click on run job and then wait a few minutes while the VMs are being prepared for you. So run job. Oops, I uh, just noticed, yes. Game event analytics ingestion. Sorry, all lowercase. So run job. Okay, the pipeline is set up and running. To test this, let's start our data producer to send some data over the wire. So first we gotta go into the Python folder. So let's cd into that one. Then remember, we have this setenv.sh file, which sets a few environment variables. So I'm going to source that file. And then using my development Python environment, I'm going to run the main.py file, which starts off the producer. So we're going to wait a few seconds here. So we're creating some data. Okay, so I think that should be enough for now. So let's cancel that data producer using control C. Okay, hopefully the data flow job has picked that data up by now and transferred it into BigQuery. To check this, we can actually have a look at the logs of that data flow job, since it will show us how much data was processed during some specified time period. Go into the data flow job and have a look at the job graph. You will see that this is a DAG describing the different operations. I'll just have a look at the read from PubSub activity and look into the throughput on the right. So let's click on that one. And there's some throughput. As you can see, there was some data going through here. So let's look if we can also see that data inside BigQuery. So let's go into BigQuery. So let's open the data set, which is Vegas and we're going to query the events table. So let's query that one. And we are going to select star from that table. And then we run this. Yes, we get data back, which is exactly in the format that we want it. Have a look at the return value. So right here, you will see that this is actually a nested field, but the output gets flattened for us in here. As you can see, it is actually pretty easy to stream data into BigQuery if the data is already in protobuffer format. To make sure you don't end up with a lot of costs, let's make sure to stop and cancel the job in Dataflow. So let's actually go back into Dataflow. Yes, I wanna leave. We go into this job that is currently running. So if you so if I would now start the producer again, it would now stream data into BigQuery again, but we're going to stop this job and we're going to cancel it. So this covers an alternative way of loading data into BigQuery. However, what if we want to apply some rather custom logic when reading from PubSub? Well, let's explore how we can do that in the next video.